Hey guys, this is Matt with Mix Coach. We are here to talk about Pro Tools 11 today. I'm actually going to probably do a quick mix of this month's song, Falling in Love with a Girl by Marcy Each. Great song. I uh, love it. Um, but yeah, but we're going to test it out in uh, the newly released Pro Tools 11. Uh, it's got some really cool new features. Uh, really digging it. Um, Let's see here. I get sidetracked easily. Sorry. I, I hate having buses stuck on inputs. I'm just weird like that. But, anyways, back to the matter at hand here. Um, yeah, man. Some of the new features in 11 is just fantastic. It's great to see them catching up on some stuff, doing things better than other stuff that has been released, in my humble opinion. Um... Uh, let's see, let's start. Told you, I'm very, very anal. You'll just have to forgive me. For now. Now, I haven't remembered all of the shortcuts for the new release, and it seems they have changed something on me here and I'm not digging that oh, oh, no. I like a clean session and yes here we go Always clean up a session. The client will be happy. Trust me. Just take it from experience. All right, let's start with the check this out. Right there. All I did was double click twice on the right click, and I'm ready to start getting my oxes. So, you know, let, let me go ahead and start oxing some stuff out. That's that right there. I love alone. Now, I haven't learned all the keys for you can do like individual track, like, you know, if you want an audio track, an instrument track, a MIDI track. I, I don't know all the hot keys for that yet, but I do know if you just double click to the right, boom, there you have it. And I'm going to need two more for what I'm doing. Start with the drums here. I've got to say, I absolutely, totally love the new metering. It's fantastic. Much better meter metering. And also, if you right click here, and this is native, it's not HD. So, with HD, you get 17 different choices the K metering system couple different kinds of arm, uh, some linear uh, uh, hybrids of PPM and uh, a peak meter but with this you get a newer sample peak meter in this engine they give you the Pro Tools Classic if you like the old peak meter for whatever reason and then you also get the peak and RMS meters from their venue series uh, I particularly like the sample peak for now I, you know I'll use RMS to check for average uh, level signal, uh, but but just the actual sample uh, peak meter itself, this is to me way way more accurate than the original Pro Tools meter. Um, I mean, just look at the playback on it. Much more snappy, quick response. Love it. Love it. Anyways, continuing here. I'm sure there's probably some kind of new shortcut for this stuff, but I just don't know it yet. There's a lot of new shortcuts that, that really favor workflow. 
And as far as I can tell, most of the shortcut key commands that already existed are no different, which it's perfectly fine with me. This was banned. Now on this one, typically I have verbs for each uh, group and treat them separately. This one, it's kind of more intimate and, and I think global treatment will work better, but I am going to use two kinds. I'm going to use two kinds on everything for to get two different spaces. Go with a plate and a room. And this is going to be our submix for these guys. I don't know why I set it up that way. It's an old way I used to set up. Let's go ahead and route this guy here. I bet you think you know the way to a woman's heart. I bet you think awesome. Everything is routed here. Turn my verbs down. Okay, um, another little thing with the metering I like that they've added is right here you actually have where your fader's sitting like it's always been. But also, finally, they have implemented where it actually, it'll show you the re resolution where it peaked without you having to toggle by hitting command and actually clicking on it. You actually get to see it in real time. I like that. Small things like that that just add up that I really like. Uh, I like the new faders here. These are actually from the new, uh, I think it's the S3L Venue Live series they have. They're actually the design from that. Um, I like them. I like, at first, I, I was iffy about them, but I, I, I'm kind of digging them. Okay, let's see. What are some new features we can cover here in the, in the mix window? Well, there's some, some more in the mix window when we get going. And if you'll notice up here in the uh, usage meter, it's no longer actual global CPU. It's actually going to, you actually uses every core now. So, as opposed to going back in the playback engine and um, having to choose how many processors you're going to use, now it just utilizes all of them on the new uh, A AAE engine, on the new Avid engine, and it's just so, so much more efficient in how it processes, with, especially with the dynamic processing. We'll, we'll check that here in a little bit once we get some uh, processing going you'll notice that in spots where audio is not playing, you'll see the, the cores actually drop in their power usage because Pro Tools detects there's no audio signal on that, so it actually cuts off that plug-in on that channel and thus saving resources. You'll actually notice that, like, especially once you get on and you just stop, you'll see everything float back down to basically nothing. As opposed to before, you can just be sitting there and freak out. So that's great, and then right here, you know, it shows you actually your actual disk usage and memory usage once you get your playback going. Let's see here. Let's go over into the edit window. Um, something that you probably won't be able to tell in the video, but when you get it, you'll definitely be able to tell, is actually the waveform now has went from 8-bit to 16-bit and the resolution is much, much higher than it was. Very much more detailed. I, and it'll definitely be easier to check phase now on certain tracks. All right, well, let's... Uh, let me go ahead and start diving into this. You'll notice here that I actually 
if in the original session you got with Mix Coach, all these were stereo out because I believe Kevin recorded them in Superior Drummer and just sent them sent them as stereo outs. I I personally I I, I just sum them to mono and I just you know I leave if I use a room or something I like these overheads I'll leave those stereo obviously, but I just like I don't care to have a stereo kick and snare and hi-hats and so I, I went ahead and rendered those to mono just it's just a preference um, okay uh, now from the plug-in side you'll notice I, I've converted everything that I have that's now 64-bit ready which is not much because a lot of them were caught off guard and not a lot of people had their 64-bit releases ready so obviously Avid and all the Air stuff that it's good to go, but uh, Blue Cat, these, this is all the plugins he has released right now in 64-bit. Uh, I was talking with him earlier. Uh, he said that there's a few more getting ready to release. All of Fab Filter stuff is now 64-bit compatible. Some of the Flux stuff and all of the Plugin Alliance stuff has been um, shipped to 64-bit. So you're good to go on any of those. Uh, DS, uh, McDSP is pretty close. Uh, today, Slate Digital announced that they're going to have a few on the way here soon, which I'm really excited about that because I own all of Steven's stuff and, and love it. Uh, Isotope will be done soon. I was talking with them at uh, GearFest. Their releases will be soon. Sound Toys. Everyone's just jumbled up here. Waves is supposed to be uh, at the end of the week. They announced that at GearFest. They're, they're shooting for the end of the week. So a lot of them are close to the release, but, you know, for gear nuts like me and that salivate over this stuff, you're like, come on, I want it now, you know, so, <laughs> but well, beggars can't be choosers. I'm just I'm glad they at least released Pro Tools 11 as soon as they did. It's been long enough, in my opinion, uh, but nonetheless, here we go. Let's uh, dive into this and let's start seeing how this playback engine handles audio now. We'll go ahead and dive in. I like starting with the drums. Go ahead and create a group here. So I can solo them all at once. loop a couple bar window here kind of start grooving off of that and we got go ahead and set up for a mono situation here And I'm gonna try to stick to just using the Avid stuff on this kind of. I, I'm really digging the channel, the Euphonics channel strip they modeled. Uh, I, I I like it a lot actually. I noticed that, that kick was clipping a little bit. I did not loop it. It should be looped now. Yes. Kick is hot. This kind of song doesn't need much low end, so I like to cut a little bit out. Just cut a 
little bit of that boxiness out. Find a little more snap in it. Let's go ahead and find the uh, fundamental frequency of this. I like a soft neon snare. I don't. I don't really like to to hear much compression on the actual snare. I guess I'm just used to SSL, which pretty much all of them come with that soft knee design. I filter quite a bit out of the the room, just depending depends on the genre. Maybe a low shelf. And sometimes just leave. You know, if it's a jazz or something, I'll uh, typically just leave it as is. But on this, there's a little bit of a rumble somewhere around 120, 130, probably coming from the kick that I just don't care much for. But other than that, I'm probably not going to much do much to the room. Maybe brighten it up a hair. Shelf. Not big on compressing rooms, especially if there's a lot of symbols. And unless it's jazz, I definitely usually roll off quite a bit on a hi hat just because it's just not needed. Now I am mixing these on my Sennheisers at a fairly insignificant volume, so excuse any crappiness. Okay, let's uh, toss some bass in there, shall we? Actually, before that, I actually want to check the phase on the snare and kick against the overheads in mono. To my ear, I like that better. channel strip here
somewhere between 20 and 30 milliseconds really where I like the bass. You get, get that attack through, but not too much of it. So you still can kind of clamp down on the sustain a little bit on the bass. Kevin did a good job playing, so you don't have to worry about leveling it too much. Plus, he probably used his music man that I'm jealous of. This also has just a little bit of low end in it. It's, for this kind of genre, it's not really needed, so get rid of some of that finger thump going on. of tone in there. And I'm going to switch the EQ in the chain to let's see here. Right here. I still want the filter before, but I want the EQ after since I'm adding it so it doesn't hit that compressor harder. Okay, now we're clipping on the master bus a little bit. It looks like we'll go ahead and uh, throw on protector. by our good friends here at Blue Cat. Thank you for having some 64-bit ready plugins. <laughs> it is appreciated. Okay. I'm actually gonna go ahead and start bringing in, sneaking in her vocal and guitar. here on this guitar I'd love to use multiband but there are no multiband plugins ready for Pro Tools 11 so as you might guess I'm definitely going to be uh, doing some filtering here but I'm actually going to do a combination of that and a low shelf this thing had some real mud around between 180 and 190, I remember checking that on a frequency analyzer, and it was it was a close mic. It obviously, definitely getting some proximity effect, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, notch out a judicious ju judicious amount here. Kind of see how that sounds. Yeah, it's definitely better. Kind of a faster release, kind of get some some snap in it. Oh well, that's not what I wanted. Great singer, good guitar player. I'm really digging it. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. Yeah, it's sitting a lot better in the mix now. You can make and then Let's add a little bit of shine on the top end of that with one of my absolute favorite plugins. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't a promise you can make. Pan these in a little bit. A 
we'll deal with that Tom later too, since it's only one hit. Anyways, let's continue this with ain't the a mountain you vocals have here. Ever climbed before. This ain't a promise you can make and then ignore Cause you just ain't fallen in love Fallen in love with a girl Fallen in love with a girl You're playing with a fire that burns straight out of control This is one of the cool features. I really like this. If you really want, instead of, as an alternative necessarily to uh, doing, you know, a sharp Q uh, high boost sweep, it's kind of a different take on kind of finding some, some of those frequencies that are in your way. See, there tends to be quite a bit of mud. I actually think I'm going to filter this up a lot. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't a problem. Her vocal, you can tend, she's got a, you know, just that really nice ah, airy rasp to it anyways, and there's not a ton of low end. I just feel like between this and the guitar, you can definitely get away with a pretty decent amount on this and it's not going to be missed I mean like it may sound a little thin and solo but you're not mixing in solo you really shouldn't be anyway ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. I mean, that right there just cleaned it up a lot to me this ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. this ain't a promise you can make in this you can hear it sounds like some room resonance there so we'll go ahead and do a uh, Pretty sharp cue on that. This ain't a mountain you Yeah, there we go. I like that. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't a I think I'm gonna use this compressor to actually now we'll use this for some so this ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't a promise you can make and then ignore. Cause you just ain't falling in love. Falling in love with a girl. Falling in love with a girl. You're playing with a fire that burns. Then I'd like to use another compressor. Presser, probably to uh, tame some of the peaks. Let's check out the bomb factory. Actually, gonna go with a fast attack and a high ratio to set that different higher threshold that is fixed within the 1176s, and go with a fairly quick release. Don't want it too fast. I don't want to possibly distort it any. Let's kind of take a listen here. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't a promise you can make and then ignore. Cause you just ain't falling in love. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. Yeah, right there. Just catch some of those peaks. This ain't a mountain you All right, let's take a listen to where this, is that where the fiddle starts playing? Yeah. This ain't an ocean that will lead you back to shore. This ain't Definitely going to filter out a lot. The lowest string on a violin, the lowest resonance that it, that actually is created is 196. The low G is 196 hertz. Is the lowest fundamental frequency it expels anyways so typically I 
filter it pretty high because there's just really there's nothing there. <laughs> so get rid of some AC noise and feet pads and all that when you can, right? <laughs> His fiddle seems a smidge bright to me. It's a uh, wrong filter. Alright, that two and a half K range there. Let's go ahead and dip a little bit of that out. Not feeling it. Much better. I don't typically like to uh, compress fiddles and violins that much. I'd rather just do vocal, or vocal. I'd rather just ride, ride it in the volume automation. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm sure you got a way and you say that's just the way you are. But baby, don't you do what you're about to do. Just wait before you go. I'm sure you got away and you I'm going to treat this similarly to an electric. I kind of like some of the honkiness from a dobro genre dependent. And you say that's just the way you are. There's a pop in there, and I think it is the bass, and it's about to drive me nuts. There it is. Well, we're going to have to edit this. Yeah, we're getting it close. Let's hear how that sounds against the band. Make sure it sounds natural. But baby, don't you do what you're about. Yeah, just kind of sounds like a, you know, he put his hand back down and stopped. That's what I was trying to see if I could get it to do. Do what you're about. See if we can get a little more precise. Give that a shot. But baby, don't you do what you're about. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Yeah, clicks and pops drive me nuts. Let's see. Let's um let's bring in the harmony vocal coming up here. Everything's sitting well, everything's recorded well. Good job, Kevin. As always. I'm sure you got background vocals like this that are, are you know there's not a ton going on in the song anyways I really don't want it to compete with the lead vocal but I also don't want to hear the compression necessarily but typically I try to compress try to catch a little bit more of the peaks with a uh, shorter attack time you know faster attack time and compress a little bit more to try to help catch some more of the peaks just so on certain things the lead element will still kind of just nudge forward a little bit more than the vocal. 
Assuming this was recorded in the same room, so we're probably going to find some of that same room resonance in the mid 300s. This ain't a notion that will lead you back to shore. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't a promise. Yeah, definitely, definitely. This ain't a notion that will lead you back to shore. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't a promise you can. This ain't a notion that will lead you back to shore. Let's see how that sits in the mix. This ain't a notion that will lead you back to shore. This ain't a. Let's go ahead and pop it out of stereo or out of mono for a minute here in stereo. This ain't a notion that will lead you back. You can make it then ignore Cause you just ain't falling in love You're falling in love with a girl You're falling in love with a girl Cool, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about some more of the new features here. Uh, something I like that they actually implemented and I think they did for the last update of 10, but I'm not sure, is before, if like I'm big on precise measurements, not so much on this, going through a rough demo of it real quick, but in this window, if you have your I.O. set up, when you actually clicked on it, you could not hit command and do precise increments like you could in the mix window. Well, now you can, and that for someone like me, instead of having to flip back and forth, I, I totally just love that feature not for everyone but certainly ranked high on my list I definitely dig that let's see here oh yeah it has a fade in feature now on the front end you can actually set a fade in time and turn it on if you wanted a song to fade in rather than creating a fade small thing kinda cool uh, there's also an output meter now up top very I'm handy sure you got also change the meters on that too and you can actually change the output path to read which if you just want to read the vox or the band you can monitor that from there for a, just a quick bird's eye view it's uh, pretty cool I, li I like that feature Let's see here what else in the edit window that I can think of off the top of my head I guess not much now for groups, here's the cool new feature. The offline bounce, you can actually bounce individual subgroups. As you can see here, it says bounce drums. If I want, now I can actually bounce a stem mix from within Pro Tools. I know Kevin talked about it a little bit. And you can actually import it right back into the session. You know, if you're actually needing it, it's, it's a virtual instrument or whatever. Say you're bouncing down your superior drummer or, or uh, ivory or, you know, just whatever. You were bouncing in MIDI, you can now... I had it set on some to mono or whatever you need, you know, interleave, stereo, multiple mono, different file formats. You can do wave and MP3 at the same time. And on HD system, you can come up here and actually add up to 16 different separate bounces to, to offline bounce all at once. And instead of it going into the audio files or if you don't redirect it, it'll actually create a bounced file folder now so you don't have to go frantically digging in your audio file section, which is great. And then uh, the shares stuff, um, Gobbler and SoundCloud, which was available on 10.3.3 and up, but you know it's still cool to have. And I think 
uh, no, iTunes library was on 10 too, but um, yeah, you know, it's still cool, cool features. I, I like the, um, you know, Pro Tools still looks pretty much the same, except for the resolution is higher, especially once you look at the minute details on, like, the actual pixelation of stuff. But I kind of like how they redone some of the edging and designs of the actual, from within the GUI. I just think it's a little more sleek. Anyways, enough about the nerdy stuff. Let's, uh... Hop into throwing some verbs on this thing. Unfortunately, I'm, all I'm really going to have here is D verb, which is great, but I'm really missing my revolver and uh, IR1. I'm really waiting on that waves and McDSP. Please hurry. I'll be grateful. All right, let's. Uh, Go ahead and go ahead and create it for all of them and just delete the ones I don't necessarily need. And I never routed them. Yay! Well, the plate's going to be this one. And as you'll see now, it actually has a little meter right here in the sins which you do get native and HD we don't get the gain reduction like HD does lucky then we'll make the room 25, 27 27, 28 don't know where that came from And I'm definitely not going to be using it on the kick. Definitely not on the hi-hat. Definitely not on the bass. Probably everything else, though. Let's go ahead and change over. Here we go. They changed the name on me. You can now actually, yeah, that's one of the new features. Rather than just having one, you can actually do all your sins at once and have them in active view as opposed to before. It was only one you could do at a time, which is, uh, I like that. It, it's cool. It's, and then when you don't need it, you can just get rid of it. Yeah, so you just go there and you can make it smaller again. But we'll keep those up for now. I usually, I, I default them to zero, but I think we're going to, let me see if I can key command for everything. And my automation is not set up for that. Let's see. There are some new features in the preferences, one of which is actually, let's see, what was it, processing. If you'll notice here for time compression expansion users, uh, the TCE is actually gone from Pro Tools now, and it's now time shift, and I, I never really used much of it anyways, so it really didn't matter to me, but apparently it's causing kind of a rigmarole with... Uh, some of the post-production guys as they liked that older algorithm for whatever reason I'm not sure why I can't find I, I don't know what I'm thinking I'm thinking actually my groups yeah so sorry little discombobulated guys go ahead and paste this Let's go. more of an intimate feel I'm going to start with the guitar and vocal for this effect. I 
like I said, typically I'd, I I like setting them to zero, but for this demonstration, I'd rather start not overwhelming it with a bunch of reverb and annoying you guys. So let's go ahead and just drop these and bring them in. I'm sure you got away and you say that's just the way you are. But baby, don't you do what you're I'm sure you got Actually, a trick I do for my EQing of verbs is send them pre fader and really get an idea of what you're actually cutting. See if you have any sublet that really sticks out rather than having to DS. on the headphones. It's really not a mix tutorial anyways, just trying to, I mean as you can see, look at the playback engine. See that? It is. And there it goes. It just kind of just floats back on down because it realizes there's no processing going on. It's great, and I actually put this on my slower machine for demonstrations to show that, I mean, you can start loading it down with whatever, and it's just, I mean, it's oh, using nothing. This ain't a notion that will lead you back to shore. This ain't As from opposed to before, man, it was done with pretty quick, usually, I mean, these aren't really necessarily super CPU intensive plugins by any means but I mean still okay it's up to eight or ten percent 
on 10 native uh, if I open the session which I, I can probably do with the co-install uh, without a problem um, it's gonna I guarantee it easily say 20 and up percent you know so it's, it's cutting efficiency in half at the minimum especially on some of the more CPU intensive plugins Like it. Get a little more snap in that thing. Actually, it's kind of just a little bit harder for me. Let's uh, write a little automation and then uh, check this offline bounce out. I'm trying to think of any of the real big stuff that I've missed that's been just a major renovation. Uh, the workspace areas. Let's see, is it Alt? I think it's Alt O. Yes, the new workspace area here which seems to be indexed a lot better and you can get to your files a lot easier here just kind of surf through stuff a little bit easier need your workspace all new engine everything's a new engine it, they said at the workshops they said every engine was an individual module that was completely redesigned at 64-bit architecture you know so the metering um, the actual signal path was already 64-bit so really it's all application stuff that has been integrated in the 64-bit architecture now Okay, well, let's see. Let's get down here to her vocal. Take a listen to this intro here. I bet you think you know the way to a woman's heart. Okay. I bet you think you know the way to a woman's heart. I bet you think it starts with the I don't use the scrolling screen or the page turn 
I don't know why, it just kind of bugs me. Because typically, I don't, actually I don't know if it's changed in this one, but before when you'd have it all the way over, there'd just be a huge gray screen and it always drove me nuts. So that's probably why. <laughs> now I'm actually going to go ahead and grab her harmony there, and I think it was flown, so I'm definitely going to fly it. Actually, I remember comparing them, so actually, I'm quite sure. Well, let me turn all off here. That'd be nice. And this was actually flown too. Gotta love flying. Pretty handy. So now it's a. Uh, Finish off this lead ball. In falling in love, falling in love, in falling in love, falling in love with the good. In falling in love, falling in love with the good. Falling in love with the good. You're playing with a fire that burns straight out of control. See, I forgot to flip it back into mono. And just realized I hadn't been panning yet. I typically leave that any more to very close to the end because typically I'll do that and then check phase issues. But there's really not much painting going on in, in this song. It's more of a narrow song. Falling in love, falling in love with the girl. Falling in love with the girl. You're playing with the fire that burns straight out of control.
Yeah. Now, just a quick run through. Uh, touch on this fiddle here and dobro. We'll start with the uh, fiddle. See if that fiddle kind of leads up with or matches up with the lead vocal there. That needs a little more stink on it. Catching that chunk you did there. Ocean that will lead you back to shore. Ocean that will lead you back to shore. This ain't a mountain you have ever climbed before. This ain't a climb before. This ain't a promise you can make and then ignore. Cause you just ain't falling in love. Falling Tag principle there. Thank you, brother Kevin. Again. All right, let's touch this dobro real quick. I bet you think it's time. Hot there, I think. Lie. 
And yeah, I think that'll do. Do a little check here in stereo. Do a master fade. Actually, need to figure out what the new shortcut is for that. Under I mean, minutes. So put these back in read. Now, luckily on this song, I'm going to go back to my all button here. I'm just going to create the universal. Usually I'll do it on the master fader, but you know, since we're just blowing through this. Just kind of square it up with everything. It should be pretty, pretty natural. Falling in love. Yeah, close enough to bluegrass. Alright, now the cool part. You get to check this offline bounce deal out. That is just superb. Sorry if I rushed through this. I just finally got my uh, recorder working after a little while of frustration, having some issues. So I've just kind of been flustered. I know I've fumbled over a few things and happened to miss a few things but I'm just I blame on exhaustion so <laughs> but I really just wanted to kind of just go through like a little bit of a just a little bit of a workflow I mean I read a lot of more things I would have did in more detail but just a basic typical workflow just to show that you know there's some things that uh, let's uh another thing I want to touch on that I just remembered was I think Kevin touched on this in the video too is you know now there's this is what's replaced some of uh, what's going on some of the short keys here if you hit shift A that will bypass everything in the plugin section and so will shift um, exclamation point and if you want just to bypass the compressors you can hit shift C boom and you'll notice this turns purple here and that is because it's just bypassing the compressor as you can see here and then you can turn it back on and then if you just want to do the equalizers it'll turn purple for that and you, but you can turn both off if you want so you can just boom boom there you go and if it's just an individual module it'll just turn the usual blue as you'll see like right there with the bomb factory and then right there with the mag EQ and well speaking of that I usually like to put a little sizzle on the vocal and granted I already know what I did to this song originally so I'm just going to add a little bit of that air to it just for fun why not and I'm trying to remember what the key command I know I think it's shift R does the reverb as you just heard <laughs> um, yeah sorry about that Let's see here. I was trying. There was one that they covered. I, I need to get a list off. Hopefully, they'll have it on the Pro Tools site. Wherever it's at. See. Anyways, you're getting the idea here. Just lots of new workflow things that are just awesome. Really loving the dynamic processing. Just shutting plugins off when they're not in use, um, and when you're at idle, and actually utilizing all the cores. And there's no more. Oh, another thing. This is really cool. Say you're you 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 have an artist and you've got just a, a vocalist that's real nitpicky, man. And you, you're just been working on it and uh, just I gotta sing that again. And, you know you've already been mixing on it, ed editing on it, and you're deep into it. You got a bunch of plugins on. You you've got latency going on, and you don't want to have to print submixes so they can sing to it and then have to import the stem back in and you know and then go back to your comping. Who wants to do that? I don't. So now there's no more buffer size except for your input. You set your input buffer in your playback engine right here, which I have it set to 128 right now. You can go lower to lower your latency on your input. So when I go to record, I can 
Well, let me choose something that's not going to pick up the mic over here. Um, well, I'll just mute the channel. So with this channel here, right now it is at 120, 128 buffer size, but everything else in Pro Tools is fixed to whatever the session feels it needs to be. So it's if it's got it really CPU intensive, it may be at 1024. But if you're recording on that channel, they're only going to hear in their phones a buffer size where there's no latency or very minimal latency. So you can still record to the track with everything set up and you're not, you know, overloading your CPU and they're not getting all the latency yelling at you and man, this thing's all echoey and delayed and blah, blah, blah. So now it's the best of both worlds. Boom. Right, right there in it. And another thing while we're at it in record, you can now write automation while you record. So, and you know, as a as opposed to, you know, if you had like a real analog console, you're sitting there riding the fader on a vocal as it's laying down, if you're, you know, really in tune and in touch with the, the person that's singing, you know, that's really, it can be a real good workflow or live and live settings, you know, for like um, uh, church stuff, live recordings you know, that people have to ship out their morning service within an hour, two hours. Someone's cutting that straight from a console and then doing a quick mix and then shooting that thing over for TV. And uh, now, you know, being able to actually be tracking and kind of, you know, have an engineer there kind of doing a static pass for you anyways, that's just, boom, instant workflow. So that's helpful. All right, now, for the offline bounce, I want to bounce this whole session now. And rather than doing it in online, you can just go over here or anything that says main out, and you can bounce to your main out. And I don't have, uh, we didn't do any master bus processing. We didn't really do any bus pro processing just for sake of time here, I'd rather cover some of the new features. Um, but, let's see here. Yeah. Let's do, for the sake of this, was it 24, 41? We'll just do the same thing since I'm not actually printing this for CD and there's no dither or anything. So we'll just do the same thing. We're going to import it back into the session. Actually, before I do that, let me go ahead and just highlight the actual... track of what we're actually wanting to bounce from front to back. Now, we just go here, bounce, interleave leave 24441. Let's import it after. Offline bounce is chosen here. Now, watch this. Now we can choose whether we want on a new track or just in the clip list. We'll just do a new track for now. We'll go down here, solo it, and boom. I bet you think you know the way to a woman's heart. I bet you think it starts with a ring in a fancy car. Like that. 20 seconds later, I have it back in the session if I want to use it for reference. Like that. And again, guys, uh, I'm sorry if I rushed through anything. Didn't mean to by any means. And by all means, this really wasn't a mixed tutorial, but I figured I'd throw some stuff in, go through some of the plugins, and just kind of just show a basic workflow, really, of the new setup and just showing that how much more efficient the engine is. Uh, let's see, if, if, I think if you double click here, boom, there, I have an audio track. And I just double clicked on the left click. And then if I do the right click, I have an aux. I mean, that's just, they have made this all about workflow and, and, and efficiency of not just work efficiency, but just computer efficiency. It's leaps and bounds ahead of where it was getting rid of uh, the, the Digi Audio engine. It's the best thing that they've they could have done, honestly. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, I hope someone gets something from this um, useful on the new program. Uh, there'll be a lot more to come as I, I hope to do a more in-depth one once I kind of get every all the new short keys unlocked. But there's a lot of new keys. 
uh, for different shortcuts now that they've added on to what was already a lot uh, for a great workflow for me anyways and uh, yeah man I hope, uh, I hope this helps someone and I hope you guys enjoy we'll catch you next time we'll see you guys